A hey, Shalom Akim Shalom. First thing and foremost, I'm gonna give all praises and glory and honor that is due to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai by Hashem Rakakwadash. I'm gonna give double honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Blessings and salutations to the whole elect. Noise in the gospel abroad, lift up the standard of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai, wherever it may be. <laughs> this is a quick lesson I found this funny and just blatantly insane. Um, how this guy, Nathaniel, which is Bishop Nathaniel, which is the leader of the uh, Israel United Church of Christ, which, you know, you got to be literary of a group that called themselves Israelites, but have that title Christ as the uh, moniker of their of their doctrine, so to speak. Um, scriptures tells us that if you call on or preach another Jesus, you may very well bear with it. And this guy's just blatantly fucking proud, man. Now, I don't know what event this is. You know, it looks like he's riding a horse, but you know, Nate is all for publicity purposes only. You know, Nate Nate deals with publicizing and he's a big sales pitch, man. At the end of the day, he's a businessman. And, you know, in our opinion, he's promoting or he's uh, making merchandise of the truth because this is a pompous and stout look here. For one thing, nigga, you have no reason to be proud and stout hearted. OK, you are still in captivity. You are subjected to payments. You pay taxes. At least we believe you do. Okay, you are under the curses, and just over a year ago, you was damn near on your deathbed, you know, from uh, uh, life-threatening illnesses from where Port came out. So, this is just not the spirit to be in, and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with taking pictures and riding horses and stuff like that, but you can tell the spirit that Nate comes in, because he's been coming in this pompous, proud spirit for years, man, okay, and... We, our teachers know this man personally, okay? And he really thinks he's in the kingdom. I mean, look at that look on his face. He's acting like he's got the victory. And he come in the spirit of the wicked scribes and Pharisees. And while I'm not saying that the, the picture or anything on a horse is wicked, but the mindset, okay, the, the, the idea behind it. Yeah, we understand we're kings, we're rulers, we're princes. We understand that we're gods and we get it, you know, but to promote, this as you've gotten salvation already. The kingdom, yeah, this is perfectly fine. But this is not the spirit you want to be putting on Israel at this time, especially coming into the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, we have to be in a humble spirit, displaying humility and walking in the steps of Yahweh Shai. Okay, even Yahweh Shai didn't come in his spirit when he came the first time. And we can get that account. Okay, so just to clear the air for disclaimer purposes, no, it's not wicked taking a picture riding a horse. No, it's not. But you get to see it in his spirit. He's proud as all hell. This is a proud ass dude, man. He's overly proud. And no, we're not hating on him. No, we're not doing X, Y, and Z. We're not hating on him. We ain't trying to downplay him or anything like that. But like I said, man, this nigga think he's made it already. Okay? And what's the purpose of doing this? What are you trying to prove? Like, is this a sales pitch for your congregation? Because we know in his congregation, you've got a bunch of simple-ass women in his congregation that follows him, and they look at him as he's God, and he's coming in the spirit as if he's the Yahweh Shai. You know, and this is, like I said, this is not the spirit to be portraying on the flock. Not saying confidence is wrong, but this is just shout, haughtiness, man. He's proud as hell. You know, and honestly speaking, none of us are in the position to be proud. And when you look at a horse, a horse represents uh, power, rulership, one on high. Okay, when you go into the scriptures, horses is synonymous with rulership and power. And Nate, you're not in power yet, bro. Okay, we're just not. We're still under. Our, we're still in our enemy's land. We're still in captivity. We're still a catching hell. Okay, we're still subjected to Esau, Edom, and his bullshit ass laws, man. Okay, so without further display, um, this is the book of uh, Sirach ten, and I'm gonna start at verses uh. Five. Matter of fact, let's start at verses um, seven. It says, Prideful is hateful before Yahweh and men, and by both doth one commit iniquity. And Nate is very proud. Okay, it ain't just this picture. Now, if it was just this one time, we call it this one off moment, then we could say, Okay, I see, brother, you know, it's, it's all good. You know, what are you trying to represent with this picture? But Nate has had a history of uh, going against the name of the Lord, saying proud and pompous things, no slander. He has a history of that. And no, we don't hate Nate. You know what I'm saying? We ain't, ain't we ain't we don't hate Nate. We ain't uh wishing any ill to him or anything like that. But we are telling him if you don't change this 
his his act or his behavior, the spirit of judgment will come down on him, and the Lord may not be so lenient this time. Okay, Christ for one thing, and that's the biggest thing. The call the names, Lord name, you'll play yogurt. We can call the Lord whatever we want to call him. That's just sheer wickedness right there, and the Lord will do something to you for that. Okay, but it says pride is hateful before the Most High in man, and both by the one commit iniquity. Now I'm not saying that what he's doing or took this picture. Uh, it's it's not a sin to take a picture on a horse. I mean, it's clearly not. But once again, it's the spirit he's coming in, pompousness. And Nate is very pompous, very proud, very arrogant. Okay, and we get that from firsthand account of what he said in videos, you know, the way he's behaved, report that came out on him. And also our teachers, once again, know this man personally. Like he was basically Apostle Tahar told him up. Like the, the fruit of IUIC is really the fruit of Apostles Tahar, man, because if it wasn't for Apostle Tahar teaching Nate, through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh Shai, that won't be a school to IUIC, man. So the apostle has a lot of fruit out there, though IUIC is a product of Nate's fruit and labors, but regardless of that, he still is an understudy of apostle Tahar. Okay, and this guy, he loves himself, man. You know, he got the garment on, I mean, he's acting like we in the kingdom. But yet, you take off that garment, you're going to burp, you're going to fart, you're going to take a number two, you know, <laughs> you're going to uh, urinate, you know what I'm saying? You're going to get sick, all right? You're going to slob in your sleep, you know, <laughs> all types of shit. So there's no reason for us to be proud. And it says here, because of unrighteous dealings, uh, injuries and riches got by deceit, the kingdom is translated from one people to another. But why is earth and ashes proud? Okay, why are you proud, man? None of us have a reason to be proud because we're all subjected into sin in this present evil world. It says there's not more of a wicked thing than a covetous man for such one and settled his own soul to sell. And it came out that you've sold out. OK, it's probably the reason why you're sales pitching everything and the truth. Everything is a fucking sales pitch to this guy. OK, didn't you how I tell you that uh, not to make his father's house merchandise? OK, when you how I put out a cat of nine tails and was whooping those jakes, man, those wicked jakes that was making merchandise of the Heavenly Father's merchant, of the Heavenly Father's truth, then Yahweh Shai had a problem with that. It was a, a grave offense. And a lot of you guys, not just Nate, you're making merchandise of the truth, man. You know, you're selling your product, you're selling your garments. And we understand that, you know, business aspects, but you can't ultimately put a price on the work of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai because he said freely give, freely receive, freely give. Selling brothers, startup kids, garments, startup kids, preset packages that's not man that's not what you're supposed to be doing okay it says for one set up sell his own soul because while he lived he cast away his vows okay uh next precept here there's the book of ecclesiastes 10 and i'm gonna start at verses uh six folly is set in great dignity and the rich set in a low place we're the rich nate okay we are the rich but we are in a low place Okay, we are the prophesied in sackcloth, man, in a state of mourning because we're mourning to Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai to get us out of here. But in your sermons, there's no urgent need of deliverance because in your mindset, you're doing good. You know, like the scriptures goes into basically uh, when a man is rich, roughly paraphrasing it, how he don't remember the poverty. You know, he's all good, but when he's into poverty, he don't remember the riches which he obtained. So when you're doing good, and you getting money in this kingdom, then ultimately you're not being afflicted because scriptures say money is a defense. But when you have money to get you out of every foul situation or every wicked endeavor, you ain't doing bad. You got a woman that's doing right by you. You know, you got a congregation that worships you like you the most high himself. You know, you got driving the cars you want. You have the particular influence on a people's mindset. You're able to buy what you want to buy. Then you ain't really desperate to get out of here because you're doing good. You're holding the body, etc. And it says, and I've seen servants upon horses and princes walking as servants upon the earth. OK, and princes, that's us. We're servants. And it says, I've seen servants upon horses. And as a cold blooded scripture, because Nate, you're still a servant, but you're upon a, ho a horse, man. Though this is going into Esau, Edom, Teddy Roosevelt, when he had the picture of the Gadite and the Judite, the statue, one opposing side to the next. And he's on a horse which Esau is a servant, but you a servant upon a horse right now, man. And you're not in rulership. 
So this stout look and this proud spirit you have, you could just cut that shit out, man. Because a Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai is not dealing with the pride. Okay? Set cloth. Uh... Matter of fact, uh, Revelation 11 is actually good. Yep, this is the book of uh, Revelation 11 and 3. And it reads here, it said, And I will give power unto my two witnesses, and they shall prophesy a thousand and two hundred and three score days, clothed in sackcloth. Okay, which sackcloth is another way of being humility. Humility. Humility, man. Okay, this thing is about humility. Not about being pompous and proud, okay? It says sackcloth. The word is sakos, means a sack, a receptacle for holding or carrying various things as money and food. A coarse cloak of dark clothes, of, of dark coarse stuff made especially from the hair of animals. Of a garment-like material and clinging to the person like a sack, which was wont to be worn or drawn over the tunic instead of a cloak or a mantle. By mourners, pitting and supplicants, and also by those who, like the Hebrew prophets, led an austere life. Okay? Sackcloth, Nate. You don't understand that. Because of your mindset, those of us that wear sackcloth, we're a bunch of bums. Okay? <laughs> you don't understand the definition of humility. Okay? Because he's been so put on a pedestal, he's been so extolled to the clouds among his congregation to the point the shit has gotten to his head. That's why the scriptures say, uh, in effect, let me get here, Proverbs. The, uh, I think it's the 16th chapter, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Proverbs 6 and 5, it says, Everyone that is proud in heart is an abomination to Yahweh. Though hand joined in hand, he should not be unpunished. Okay, and the scriptures say that uh, pride coming before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. All right. So, hey, you're destined to fall, bro, if you don't get out of that spirit, man, and, and really come to your senses. Okay. Proverbs 16 and 18, pride go before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. You see? So, hey, it behooves you to, to, to repent and to get your mind right, man. Okay, because like I said, you ain't got it all, bro. You a servant in Babylon just like everybody else. So what? You may have a couple of bands or a couple of M's to your name for whatever nefarious purposes that you've engaged in. But regardless of that, you're still subjected to this man's kingdom because you can't just go... And exercise your will upon Esau or the elites. So there's no reason for you to be proud. Okay. With that stout look on your face, man. Scriptures say a man's countenance. You can tell a lot by a man's countenance. And like I said, he think he's got it already. In his mind, said he's the man. And he's promoting that image on his congregation. And they're coming in the same spirit. Because when you look at their uh, their pages, etc. I mean, they literally believe that these there's they're, they're, they're some type of... They believe that they're the ultimate warriors. They believe that they're the prophets of Israel. They really believe that they are the elect. But we're here to tell you that that's probably not the case because you're claiming it with such a pompous spirit and no type of remorse in your spirit. You guys ain't it, man. And you're not the prophets. Okay, now we're not saying all of you will be destroyed. We're not saying that. But a great number of you will be destroyed because, hey, you're following this man into the darkness. And why Nate may very well repent, and possibly may be a man of the Lord. Who knows, you know? But a lot of you dudes, you're just going to fall off the fucking... You, you're going to fall off the... You're just going to fall off, man. Because you're not grounded in this thing. You don't understand what this thing is about. Okay, Yahweh Shad didn't tell us to come in that spirit. The spirit that you're coming in, man. All right? This is the book of Zephaniah, Zechariah 9. And I'm going to start at 9. It says here, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion, and shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, thy kingdom... they." Thy king, okay, a king is a person of rulership. Yahweh Shai, coming unto thee, ye just in having salvation, lowly in riding upon an ass and upon a coat of a fowl of an ass, man. Yahweh Shai came in humility. He didn't come in glory. He didn't come with the chariots, okay? He didn't come with, 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 with all the heavy accolades and so forth with the proud spirit. Now, when he returns, that's different because he's coming to declare war. He's coming back in his glorious apparel, to set up the kingdom because it's at that time. But Yahweh Shai didn't come on the scene the first time at the start of his ministry with the spirit such as this. 
Okay, Yahweh Shai looked down on that, man. Okay, pride. The Lord doesn't deal with pride, man. And us as men and women in his faith, hey, we subjected to being proud. That's why we have to continue to check ourselves and humble ourselves before Yahweh Bashimi Yahweh Shai, man. Okay? Uh, one more precept. Did a word search on the humble. And when you go into the book of uh, Psalms, uh, Psalm 69 and 32, it says, The humble shall see this and be glad, and your heart shall live that seek the most high, man. Humble. Scripture says it's better to divide the spoils with the low than to be proud, uh, roughly paraphrased, than to be, yeah, here you go, Proverbs 16 and 19. Better is to be of a humble spirit with the lowly than to divide the spoils with the proud, man. Okay, so humbleness is the key factor here. Now, like I said, nothing wrong with taking a pitch on a horse. But, bro, man, you're missing the whole point of this thing. And you really need to, to, to not push that spirit on Israel because Israel is missing the key point as to going out there and bringing forth fruit meat for repentance, man. Okay, this is not about being popular or being that dude or having the most women or this ain't about that. But the spirit you guys are pushing... You're pushing a worldly vibration, man. So people are missing exactly what this truth is about. That's why the scriptures say that the Lord have revealed this into babes, man. Okay, into the foolish you've given this wisdom. The ones that was confounded and rejected of the world. You guys, you ain't being rejected of the world. Okay, I mean, your message may be controversy because you are teaching the truth as far as who the Israelites are. That's the only opposition you may have with your message because the world looks down on our heritage. But if you wasn't teaching Israel... The whole fucking world will love you, man. You are no different than a Christian church. All right? So I'm going to end it there. Giving all praises and glory and honor that is due to you. How about you? How about you? And with that, Shalom and the Baba Ball.